I love Mario Party. Sure, I wouldn't say it's for everyone, it's not exactly deep or even particularly strategic gameplay, but it's fun, especially if you can rope other people into it. In true Nintendo fashion, it's dead simple to pick up, and anyone from your little brother and sister to your mom or dad will generally be able to get into it. Well, as of March this year, Mario Party fans like me can rejoice. Mario Party 4 has been completely decompiled. This marks not only the first Mario Party entry to be decomped, but also, as far as we know, the first GameCube game, and one of the only 6th generation games, period. And all under a year and a half, which is pretty quick for something like this. I had my eye on this project for a while. While many decomps get started, but then move it a crawl, or even stall altogether, this one seemed to burst onto the scene out of nowhere and quickly leapt ahead with no sign of stopping. Every time I checked in it made another huge jump, at a time when arguably more popular GameCube games like Mario Sunshine or Smash Bros. Melee still have a long way to go. What made Mario Party 4 of all games get a decompilation sooner than all the rest? Is Mario Party 4 specifically just that popular? Well, we'll answer all that and more after a message from our sponsor. If you're in need of a website and don't want to mess around with writing code or having to set up and maintain a server, then Squarespace is one of the easiest ways to do it. They have over a hundred templates to choose from, whether you need a website for an online store, portfolio, business or blog, Squarespace has you covered and will get you up and running in no time. And if you need to make any customizations, their site editor is a breeze to you, so you can really give your website the personal touch it needs. I used Squarespace for my online store and loved just how easy it was to get a great looking result. It integrated immediately with everything that I needed it to and it gave me peace of mind to know that my store was in good hands. So if you want a great looking website with no fuss, head over to squarespace.com slash mattkcbytes to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And now back to Mario Party. The short answer is no, Mario Party 4 is not just that popular. It's a well-loved game of course, and I feel very fondly about it, but it generally ranks kind of in the middle as far as people's favourite Mario Party games. So why was it the first to get fully decompiled? Well, project founder Rain Choose had originally been working on a Mario Party 1 decomp, but after hitting a massive snag that would have taken a long time to fix, and after some innovations had been made in the GameCube scene in the form of the decomp toolkit, he started to look at Mario Party 4 instead, especially because of one critical discovery that the community had made about it. Mario Party 4 was compiled without optimizations. I've talked about this before in videos about Super Mario 64, and LEGO Island, and Rock Band 3. Compiler optimizations are a very common feature used in the majority of software, especially nowadays. Basically, rather than a relatively straight translation from, in this case, C to PowerPC assembly, the compiler kind of rewrites your code to do the same thing, but in a way that takes as much advantage of the CPU as it can. A lot of programming concepts that are helpful for us humans writing the code simply aren't relevant or don't exist as far as the CPU is concerned, so there's often a lot that the compiler can do to improve performance at the expense of code readability. After all, it's usually not a high priority to read the code that comes out of a compiler. Unless, of course, you're trying to reverse engineer it like we are. Then the optimizations only serve to obfuscate the original source code that went in, making the job of decompilation significantly harder. You can still generally figure out what a particular function is doing, but it'll probably take a lot more time, and then even longer to tease apart what the original source code might have looked like before the compiler rewrote it. There are also legitimate reasons why a developer might avoid compiler optimizations. When debugging, you actually do want the compiled result to map pretty closely to the source code you've written, so if something goes wrong, it can tell you exactly where the problem is in your code. Optimizations are also not perfect, and while they're pretty solid these days, there was a time when they could get something wrong and introduce instability. This is generally assumed to be the reason why Super Mario 64 originally used no optimizations. I mean, if there's one thing worse than a game that runs slowly, it's a game that crashes unpredictably. Still, by the time of Mario Party 4, I would imagine optimizations were fairly commonplace. Even Mario 64 eventually had them turned on in the later PAL and Shindo editions, so I'm not sure why Mario Party 4 would opt out of them. But of course, for our purposes, we can be very thankful that they didn't. It's kind of astounding the game runs as well as it does without compiler optimizations. In all my years of playing it, I don't think I've ever seen the frame rate dip below 60 frames per second. The GameCube really was hiding a powerhouse inside that cute little box. Unoptimized code is like the holy grail of decompilations, arguably even more than debug symbols. It's an advantage that most decomp teams can only dream of. Since the code is a much more literal translation of the C code that went in, it's much easier to just translate it back. 
After Rain Chews made this discovery, pretty much everyone in the Mario Party research community jumped on board, banding together for what had become their best shot at actually completing a Mario Party decomp. At which point, they were off to the races. Like any decomp, it's not so much about the huge breakthroughs as it is about putting the time in to make constant incremental progress, but that doesn't mean some interesting discoveries weren't made along the way. The majority of Mario Party games were not actually developed by Nintendo. Instead, they were developed by an outside studio, Hudson Soft, and from a code perspective, it's better to think of it as their game rather than Nintendo's. Today, we've got widely used off-the-shelf game engines like Unity, Unreal, and Godot, but this was back in the era where none of those existed, and game developers instead generally just used their own in-house engine. And as it turns out, Mario Party shares its engine with another Hudson Soft game, Adventure Island, a game that, it also turns out, we do have debug symbols for. Debug symbols, as I alluded to earlier, are another holy grail of decompiling. They're essentially a complete index of which part of the source code each part of the compiled executable pertains to. They often work hand in hand with unoptimized code to more accurately link to the right parts of the source, but neither of them necessarily require the other. As such, debug symbols reveal things like function names, variable names, source file names, line numbers, just about everything except for what the line of code actually was. That's still up to us to figure out. So even though they didn't have debug symbols for Mario Party 4, they effectively did have symbols for the underlying engine, at least symbols for a game that could easily be cross-referenced with it, which naturally further boosted their ability to decompile a huge chunk of the game. Despite all of this, decompilation can still be a challenging process. Hudson Soft did something kind of strange. They used a lot of implicit declarations. An implicit declaration is when you use something without declaring it first. For example, calling a function when the compiler hasn't been told what it is beforehand. This was allowed in early versions of the C standard. It would assume a fairly generic signature that allowed any parameters to be passed and a simple variable to be returned. And it would then hope that the linker would be able to figure out where that function actually was, assuming the developer knew what they were doing. This often did work out thanks to C's calling conventions keeping everything on track, but implicit declarations eventually became seen as poor practice, so in the C99 standard they were removed. However, for backwards compatibility, many compilers still allow them, only issuing a warning at most. It's up to the developer whether they choose to make that an error that needs to be fixed or not. Well, it seems like Hudson Soft went in completely the opposite direction. Apparently, they just turned off warnings altogether. As such, the code is full of implicit declarations, apparently around 5,000 of them if you leave the warning on. These had to be replicated in the decomp because whether a declaration is implicit or explicit can indeed affect how the compiler generates machine code. There are also other silly mistakes like functions that return uninitialized variables potentially leading to undefined behavior. A compiler would have certainly issued warnings for that, but they either end up not being used or not causing a problem because, you know, clearly the game works fine despite that, and due to the lack of optimizations, these things weren't too hard to identify in the machine code, they were mostly just confusing and baffling to discover. So what's next for the Mario Party 4 decomp? It's worth noting that despite technically being complete, it's still currently stuck at 99% because of a few stubborn functions that refuse to match despite trying all of the tricks they have on hand. It reminds me a lot of the situation with LEGO Island. We're extremely confident that we've got everything implemented and accurate to the original source code, but we just can't quite get it all to 100% match. For both projects, the attitude seems to be, yeah, it'd be nice to get 100% eventually, but it's not like we need it to do any of the things we want to do. Realistically, I think this might be the future for a lot of decomps, especially decomps from the sixth generation. As the target games and their associated compilers become more modern and complex, it'll become harder and harder to get every single instruction to match perfectly. Ultimately, while it's unsatisfying to be so close yet so far from perfect, I don't think it really matters in the grand scheme of things. I mean, if Hudson Soft were to open source Mario Party 4, but their only copy of the code was from a day or two before the final build, it'd still be so close that it wouldn't really matter. Like I said, we could still do whatever we wanted to do with a game we loved. Naturally, each member of the team had different reasons for pursuing the decomp, ranging from a full-blown PC port to just wanting to see how the game ticked. Speedrunners especially have benefited from various discoveries found from the decomp. Team member David has already started a PC port using a GameCube to PC translation layer called Aurora, and there are long-term plans to implement a true online multiplayer feature. The only way to do it now is using Dolphin's Netplay, which, while good for what it is, is by no means as good as a native built-in online feature. Considering the fact that real Mario Party didn't have online multiplayer until Super Mario Party on the Switch, this really goes to show what kinds of doors can open with a full codebase like this. There have also been talks of combining every Mario Party board into a single game. 
Indeed, this team has at least started a decomp for pretty much every entry in the series. It could be really cool to combine them all into one Mega Mario Party, but of course, it'll probably be years before they all reach that level of completion. Unfortunately, decompiling Mario Party 4 helps pretty negligibly with the other Mario Party entries. Despite some common Hudson Soft code shared between them, for the most part, they're all completely distinct games written from the ground up each time. Which really goes to show how much effort goes into Mario Party and how much we'll have to go into reverse engineering them too. I couldn't be more excited to see what the future holds, and I'd love to hear in the comments what you guys think. Which Mario Party game do you want to see decompiled next? What mini games would you love to finally be able to play natively online? But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys.